that the password into his presence is thank you. Come on, what are you grateful for? There's something to be grateful for this morning. Let's stir up gratitude and thanksgiving in this house and ask his presence to come. Let's sing it together. Come on, here we go.
other than just to block out all distractions but just block out every distraction and just set your gaze set your attention your admiration on Jesus on the person the man of Jesus we magnify you King of Kings Lord of Lords our hope our strength our source our deliverer our comfort there's no one higher no one stronger no one greater than you be high and lifted up in this house be exalted in our worship. Dusty was talking, something just went off in my spirit and just really confirmed uh, some things in my heart. This week, I got a word that I felt like was for today, and uh, a lot of the times, the way that I will talk to God is I'll say, hey, if, if, if that's a word for this Sunday, just keep it on my heart, and keep it on my heart, and keep it on my heart. Um, and this morning, I woke up, and the first thing I thought about was this word, and is it, is it okay if we just minister a little bit this morning? Is that all right with you guys? I, uh, you know, one of our beliefs here at Church on the Rock is that, that we want to be a house of worship. And I believe that the enemy will do everything he can to mess that up. And so I had planned to come up after the last song, but as Dusty was talking and, and mentioned the word family, I just felt like the Lord said, go now so that there's an opportunity for us to worship after the ministry. And so the word that the Lord gave on my heart, it, it, it's, it's three parts. Um, and I want you to listen to me. I, I, I believe that the basic element of the kingdom of God is family. I believe that family is so important. I believe that family is so crucial to who we are and what we do and why we do it and what we believe. And so I know this, that the enemy will do everything he can to mess your family up. He will do everything he can to break your family. And so this week, this morning when I woke up, I just began to write down and I just, I wanna open up the altar this morning um, for, these, for, for those of you that would say that's me Pastor Heath I believe God wants to do something in your hearts today and so the first word is this is, is the Lord said that there's people in this room and there's been an offense caused in your family there's been an offense and maybe you caused it or maybe you were the one that's offended and because of it there's been separation in your family there's been distance in your family. There's been this uh, awkwardness in your family. And the Lord told me to tell you this morning that the only thing that is holding you back from everything that God has for you is your unwillingness to deal with that offense in your family. And so if that's you, in just a minute, I'm gonna have you come down with everybody else. We're gonna have a time of ministry. But God wants you to understand this. You holding on to that offense is only hurting you. It's not hurting the person that offended you. It's not hurting the person that did that to you. And, and his goal for you is total freedom. And part of that is living away from offense. And so if that's you, in fact, let's just do it right now. If that's you, on the count of three, we're just going to be family here this morning. I want you to come up. I want you to come to this area right here. One, two, three. You guys just start coming up if that's you this morning. Just start coming up. Come on. 
Come on, there we go. Yeah, you guys get excited. Sorry, I want to make sure I, I say this right. You guys just kind of group up right here. It's all right, keep coming. The second word was this, is you are in a season where you are grieving over your family. It may be because of a lost loved one. It may be because of something that happens, but there's a spirit of grief in you over, over family. If that's you, come on up. One, two, three, just come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. And then the third word that God gave me is this, is that there's people in this room and your earthly father has created a, a, a spirit of inadequacy in you. Your earthly father has said things. They've made you feel like you're less than. They've made you feel like you're, you're, you're not welcome. You're not a part. You're... you're Am I making sense? There's an inadequacy. There's a spirit of inadequacy that I don't measure up like everybody else. And your earthly father has put that on you. If that's you, I want you to come forward today. Just come on. You guys squeeze in here so everybody can get up here. Come on. Is this okay, church? Is this okay? Come on. The Lord made it very clear to me a few months ago that in this season, we were supposed to take time and minister because these are the things that are holding us back to what God has. And so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, Pastor Jackie, I'm gonna ask you to come up here. I, I believe, I believe that there's so much power in what a father speaks over you. And can, can I just tell you this, that your earthly father does not create value in you, only your heavenly father does. Your earthly father does not get to decide how valuable you are. Your earthly father does not need to decide what you do and what you don't do. Now listen, I'm not saying don't honor your father. What I'm saying is the only one that puts value on you is the one that created you. The one that has a purpose for you, the one that has a plan for you. And so here's what we're gonna do. This is, this is the spiritual father of our house. He didn't even know I'm asking him to come up here, but that's okay. I, I just believe that as he speaks over this group up here today, that a healing and a fresh anointing is gonna fall over you as if the heavenly father was speaking over you this morning. And so if you're out there behind them, would you just extend your hands to this group right here? Come on, let's pray this morning. Why don't you just take your hands and open them up to the Lord right now? I believe the Holy Spirit is here in this place. I believe he's about to make a deposit into your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come and I pray for every one of these children. And that's what we are. We're all just children. We're, we're all... We're all needy. We're, we're, we're all immature. And as children, we come to you and we say, Lord, would you please pour your spirit out upon us? Nothing can heal us but the spirit of the Lord. We can talk about it all day long. Talk doesn't bring healing. Your spirit is what heals. Release your Holy Spirit upon us right now. Father, we choose to forgive. We choose to let go of the offense. We choose to to give honor, even when honor was not given to us. We choose to do what's right so we can receive everything you have for us. So, Father, right now I declare healing, healing in the name of Jesus, healing, healing from all the hurt, healing from all the separation, healing from all the bitterness, healing from even anger and hatred, healing today in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare, I speak the word over every person in this room today that Father, we're enough because we have you. We are enough. Everybody just open your mouth and, and tell the Lord you understand. Just say, I am enough. I am enough. Jesus makes you enough. 
You don't have to be anything other than what He made you to be. Father, release that spirit of being enough right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give God a clap offering of praise. And I surrender. I surrender. All to Thee. disappointment, all the frustration, Jesus. To Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Come on, every hand lifted, let's sing it. And I surrender all. Yes, Jesus. I surrender To Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. One more time.
you. I pray for the one, the two, the ten, the hundred in the room that have given up. Just like, just like Lazarus's sisters, you had died, he had died. And they said, where were you? Where were you? If you would have been here earlier, he wouldn't be dead right now. I pray for that one, that two, that ten. Say, where were you, Jesus? Where are you, Jesus? Where, if you would have been there, if you would have been there, this wouldn't have happened. I declare that in this house, we welcome resurrection. That we know as, lo as, as, as long as you're on the scene, miracles are possible. And we welcome the resurrection and we crown you King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's, let's lift up one more shout of praise. Come on, he's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. That's my encouragement to you this morning. Don't give up. I know you're disappointed. I know you're frustrated. But don't give up. He's on the way, okay? He's on the way. He's gonna, he can redeem any situation, any circumstance. It's an honor to be in his presence with you this morning. I want you to do something for me real quick. I just want you to take the next few seconds and welcome the people around you. Give them a big old high five, a hug, an encouraging word. We're so glad that you're here this morning, y'all. Give it up for Matt, come on. Yeah. Man, it's great to be in his presence with you. There's no better place on the planet, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if this is your first time, just stick up your hand and put it down real fast. Come on, can we give it up for our first time guests? I see a few hands. Come on, let's make them feel welcome, y'all. If this is your first time, man, you're in the right place. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us at Church on the Rock. Uh, we wanna get to know you and uh, give you a chance to get to know us a little bit. Um, there's a QR code in your seat back pocket, or they'll throw one on the screen. You can get up, get your phone camera out and just hover over that, um, and you'll be prompted uh, to fill out some information. Um, right after the service, after you fill out that information, go to Connect Central. It's right outside these doors to your left or these doors to your right. Uh, you can't miss it, I promise. Uh, Connect Central. There will be someone there with a gift for you, ready to welcome you. If this isn't your first time and you're like, man, this place is dope. I want to get plugged in. You're, you're right, it is, it's awesome. It's a great place to serve. Um, and so if you wanna serve, there's a million places, a million amazing serving ministries 
kids ministry, AVL, worship, greeting team, uh, connect team is what they call it, um, and so many, so many more. Uh, so make sure you get off the bench and get in the game, right? Get off the bench and get in the game. Uh, because God is up to something big. Also, if you're inter interested in serving, you can also go to Connect Central. Uh, so make sure you do that right after the service. I want to give you an opportunity to give. Uh, corn dog stands right around the cor corner. Did y'all know that? Y'all excited about that? Make sure you go to South Plains Fair and go to the world famous Church on the Rock corn dog stand benefiting the Lubbock Dream Center. But if you want to give your tithes and offerings or a special gift, I heard this the other day and I thought this was so good. I heard that we are most like God when we are generous. Isn't that beautiful? That we are most like God when we are generous, right? For God so loved the world that he, that he gave. He gives us mercy and grace. He gives us all of the resources, right? Everything is his. So we believe when we give, we're not, uh, we're not tithing out of obligation, but we're just giving back a portion of what's, our, what's been given to us. So if you wanna do that, if you wanna give, there's black boxes. At each doorway, you can give by cash or check. There's a kiosk in the foyer if you want to give by credit card or debit card. Or you can give online, cotrpeople.com. You can even uh, scan that same QR code. Go download the Church on the Rock app, and it's really, really easy to set up a reoccurring gift uh, there on the app. Um, last thing, follow us on social media, not because we want all the followers, but because there's just really good information on social media. We want you to stay connected like a family, um, and we're so glad that you're here. Yeah? Y'all ready for the word? Come on, I need you guys to be ready. I've got to prime the pump a little bit. Here we go. Give it up for Pastor Heath. Come on, bring us the word, Doc. Thank you, Pastor Dusty. Well, hey, good morning. I, uh, man, wasn't that a powerful time of ministry this morning? A powerful time of worship. I, uh, I'm telling you, man, sorry, let me get this fixed. God... God has just been speaking to my heart lately that it is hard to minister to people. It is hard to speak to people that have a lot of burden in their life. And so um, he's, he's called me to make sure that we have these times to minister to people. I mean, you know, that's important. It's very important. And so if you're here today and you're like, man, what was that all about? That's just us partnering together as a church family and asking God to do what he's promised to do in our life, to bring healing, to bring restoration, uh, to bring redemption. And so I'm thankful for that. Well, we are in week two of our Planted series. Everybody say planted. planted. Say, I am planted, planted. not potted. Not potted. <laughs> I hope so. Amen. I, uh, I am planted as a Red Raider fan. I'm not potted. I'm not going anywhere after what I saw last night, but I can feel the weight in this room of some of you just going, man, it'd be a lot easier to root for Alabama. Like, I can just feel it. I can see it. You, some of you cheered when Alabama beat Texas last week. You got more excited than when Tech won the game. Amen? Don't be potted when it comes to Texas Tech. We're going to be okay. Say, we're going to be okay. All right. And don't be potted in the things of God. Last week we talked about that there are no drive through versions for what God wants to do in our lives. There's no quick, easy, convenient store methods to the plans that he has for us. And so last week we talked about the power of being planted in the word of God and the house of the Lord. And this week we're going to talk about the process of planting. Now are there any farmers here? Raise your hand. I know we got farmers all over. Listen, farmers, please, listen, I'm not a farmer, okay? So if I say something wrong about planting, don't get offended at me today, okay? Just keep a pure heart. Correct me after the service. Um, but how many of you know we live in an area where the process of planting things is very important? There are certain times to plant uh, cotton seed. There are certain times not to plant cotton seed. There are certain uh, places to plant it and certain places not to plant it. And so today I want to talk to you about the process of planting and all of the impatient people in the room said amen, right? Because some of us hear that word process and we go, that is not for me. And I am here today to declare to you 
that there are things that God wants to give you on the other side of the process that you're in right now. There are things that he's doing in you to prepare for you what he has for you after this process. And so my question today is this, is what has God promised you? What has God promised you? What, what is it that God has promised you? I know at a very early age, God began to promise me that I was called to ministry. We would have guest speakers come into our church, and, and it almost got comical because one guest speaker would come in, and I'd be sitting out here, and they would call me out and say, you have the, you have the gift of ministry on your life. You have the gift of ministry on. The next guest speaker would come in. You have the gift of ministry on your life. The next, I was at a revival one night in Abilene, over a 1,000 people, and a lady that was speaking picked me out of a room and said, you have the gift of ministry on your life, and the Lord wants you to know that you're going to marry into a family that's already doing amazing things, and you're going to be a part of that ministry. And I fought God tooth and nail for 15 years. I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to teach and I want to coach. I want to do what I want to do. And so what is it that God has promised you? Maybe it was years ago. Maybe it was months ago. Maybe it was centuries ago that God promised centuries, decades ago, not <laughs> centuries, okay? Sorry. But can I tell you that if God promised it to you, he, he's, he doesn't break his promises. It will come to fruition. Richard Whitcomb says this. He says, the promise is God's part. The possession is our part. And somewhere in between the promise and the possession is the process. You see, there are promises that God has given us, and all he's waiting on us for to do is to take possession on them. But here's the truth. Some of the things that God has promised you if he gave them to you right now, it would crush you. Some of the things that God has promised you, if he gave them to you right now, you couldn't handle them. God, make me a millionaire. And you're not even faithful with the $3,000 you're making every month. Man, if I just had more, more money, all my problems would be gone. No, it wouldn't. Because more money would to intensify the problems that you currently have. The Bible says that he who can handle little can handle much. Oh, Lord Jesus. Glory. All my friends are getting married. Just give me a husband. And you're still insecure. And, and, and God's going, man, if I gave you that right now, it wouldn't work because you haven't gone through the process. And this isn't one of those words that, look, today, let me just tell you, this is more of a teaching than a preaching. This isn't one of those words that you walk out of this room going, "Woo, glory to God, I'm fired up. But can I tell you, it's a part of the life that we live. Young people, listen to me. I get to, listen, on Tuesday night, I get to speak to our young adults here at Church on the Rock. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I've got my young, young attire already picked out. I've got you... These, these, are, these are like an athletic skinny jean, okay? I'm, real, I'm wearing the real skinnies on Tuesday, all right? It's going to be good. It's going to be good, all right? But young people, listen to me. My, my major regret in life, I actually got asked this this week. Uh, I was meeting with a bunch of pastors, and my main regret in life is that I didn't flourish in the process, I whined and cried and pouted and manipulated and tried to make it my way and tried to hurry it up and tried to speed things up. And can I tell you that everything that's happened in my life that was a promise of God happened in his perfect timing for my life. Like, like if he would have gave me that years ago, it wouldn't be good. And so... As we talk about the process of planting, here's the first thing you need to know. That if you're going to plant something, you need what? Seed. Everybody say seed. seed. God's promise is like seed. You say, I, I don't want seed. I, don't, I want God's promise to be like the harvest. I want it to be like the harvest, and yet God's promise is like seed. In fact, the Word of God says this in Exodus. It, it says, uh, 
The, the, the Israelites are upset at God. They're upset in the process they're in, and they're talking, and they're speaking, and they're saying, God, we're hungry. We're hungry. And God says, okay, next, tomorrow morning when you wake up, there'll be bread waiting on you. How many of you know that's a good God? It's a good God that there will be bread waiting on you. And the Bible says this, that they woke up the next morning, Exodus 16 says this, when the Israelites saw it on the floor, talking about the bread, they said to each other, what is it? And the reason they asked this is because in Exodus 16, 31, it says this. It says, the people of Israel called the bread manna. It was like coriander seed and tasted like wafers. Now, I don't know about you, but there is only one restaurant that I go to in town when I want the bread. Does anybody know what restaurant I'm talking about? Whew. Texas Roadhouse, all right? I don't know what they put in that cinnamon butter, but it needs to be checked for illegal things in it. That's the bread that I like. Somebody recently gave us a gift card to Texas Roadhouse, and I was like, great, we can go, and we can order something, but we can get the free bread. And yet it said the Israelites woke up and it looked like a bunch of seed like stuck together. And part of the meaning of the word manna is exactly what they said. What is this? Like what? What is this? This is not what we were expecting. Has God ever promised you something and you go, what is this? Th this was not what I was expecting. And yet the Bible goes on to say that it provided the nourishment they needed in the season that they were in. The Bible in the New Testament says things like the kingdom of God is like seed and it's spread on the hard soil, the rocky soil. And my question to you today is how many of you have been promised something by God and he may have given you something to plant to give, and you go, man, what is this, God? Anybody, like I've done this with God, like God, that's not the way I would have done that. Anybody else? <laughs> like that's not the way I would have done that. I would have done it differently, and if you want my advice, I'm happy <laughs> to give it to you. And God says, no, here's some seed. Here's some seed, I'm giving you some seed. I was looking over here, I saw Randy Boyd. I can barely see because the lights are so bright, but God gave Randy seed for Prepare International. It didn't, it didn't you see, everybody says, man, I, I want what Randy has. I want his anointing. I want where his ministry. I want, I want what he has, but are you willing to do what he did? Like, man, Pastor Jackie, just the fa one of the fathers of our city, he's been here for, for over 40 years. I want what he has, but are you willing to do what he did? Like, the reason these men of God are so few and far between is because we are raising up a generation that wants everything they had, but they're not willing to do what they did. They're not willing to press in when it gets hard. They're not willing to stay planted where God tells them to and move when God speaks to them. And there's something that is powerful in your life that as God gives you seed, if you'll do this, if you'll hear the word of God, believe the word of God, and obey the word of God. Boy, I don't, I don't know why I keep coming back to young people, but young people, can I just save you from a lot of hurt? Whatever God has promised to your life, hear the word of God, Believe the word of God and obey the word of God. Because the truth is, is once God gives you that seed, the second thing is this, is we've got to take that seed and we've got to put it what? We've got to put it in the ground. We've got to put it in the soil. Everybody say soil. Did you know, farmers again, don't throw things at me, all right, that the soil is a lot more important than the seed? Did you know that I can take 
cotton seed to other parts of the world and it won't grow the way that it grows here? That, that, that you can go to certain parts of California and see the vineyards and the grapes and, and they won't grow like that in other parts of the world. Why? Because of the soil that they're planted in. I, 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 I talked about this a little week. Last week, my wife told me to come on and make a public announcement, a public apology. Last week, I said that fake plants die in our house, all right? <laughs> she took offense to that statement. She actually came up to the front and got ministry this morning. So I, I gave her the opportunity to get healed from that. But she wants everyone to know that she is a plant lady. <laughs> she likes the plants. And every year when it gets time to plant pots, how many of you plant pots at your house? It's like, this is like a, this is like a, it's like a, a secret club of pot planters, okay? That like they're serious about it. And we go and we get the pots, and then we go and we get the plants. But my wife always says, hey, I, the, the plants will like sit in our backyard for like two weeks because she has to get the right soil to plant them in. Everybody follow me? Like she has to go to the, to the, to the nursery and get the, the, uh, the miracle grow. Woo, I could preach on that right there. I say, why don't you just get some dirt from the backyard, put it in. She said, no, we got to have the miracle grow because that gives the plant, that gives the seed the best chance to grow. And so I started thinking about this week, and I wrote down a few things that I believe when God gives you a promise, when God gives you a seed, that there are certain things you should plant those seeds in. And again, this is not a woohoo. God is good moment, but this is truth, and you need to know this. The first one is this, is you need to plant God's promises in intimacy with God. You need to plant it in intimacy with God. Here's the truth. Roots grow in private, not public. Some of us have taken our seed and gone, oh, Gilbert, look at it. Look what God's promised me. Look, Gilbert, look at it. Don't ignore me. You look at this. And, and, and we, want to, we want to publicize everything that God's doing in our life. We, we, we want to publicly worship and publicly be in his presence. And God is saying, man, I want to do things in your life in private, under the dirt, the scripture actually says it in Matthew 6. It says, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. The first reason we need intimacy with God, the first reason we need a secret place is because the Bible says that God will meet you there when you're in that secret place. It says, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I talked about Pastor Jackie and, and, and Pastor Randy back here and all they've done for the kingdom of God. Can I tell you, God didn't develop them on the stage. God didn't develop them up here in front of everybody with the light. God developed them in the secret places. God says, hey man, quit, quit trying to build a public platform and get in private with me. Get in a place. I've talked to you guys before about my office. I mean, I go in my office, and can I tell you, it's okay to get in private with God and say, God, I don't have a clue what I'm doing right now. God, I need you. And the Bible says that wherever your secret place is, wherever it is that you meet with God, he will be there. You see, get David, we find out very early on that David gets a seed from God. He gets a promise from God. The Bible says, you're going to be the next king. And as pastors, we love to say this. We love to say, and as soon as David got his anointing, as soon as he got his promise, 
he went right back to the field. He went right back to working and tending the sheep. But you know what we don't say is the field was David's secret place. You see, maybe David didn't get his anointing and go right back to the field to tend to the sheep. Maybe he got his promise and went back to the field to meet with God. Because things were coming. King Saul was coming. Goliath was coming. And in all of those situations, you see David deal with Saul, and King Saul is trying to kill him. And no matter how hard King Saul tries, David honors him and says, I won't harm you, and says, I won't hurt you. You see him defeat, the, the, you just see him defeat Goliath. And what you are seeing is a public response that was formed in private. Boy, that's good right there. Some of you, some of you don't, aren't developed in private, and it shows in public. Some of you aren't developed in the private place, and it shows in your posting. Woo. See, I did. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> but can I just encourage you this morning, church, that you need, a, you need a secret place with God. You need a place where you just sit and talk and listen because you'll find out how God wants to grow that anointing in your life. The second thing is this, is you need to plant your seed in worship. I told you when I came up here during worship this morning, my heart has been burdened that we as a church are not taking advantage of the opportunities we have to worship God. We, 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 we say, man, I just, I don't know after this week if I have much to worship about. I, I just don't, I just don't know what God's doing. I just don't know. Can I tell you that one of the things that God has taught me in the last few years is that worship has nothing to do with what's happened to me this week. Worship has nothing to do with me and everything to do with him. And as long as Jesus sent, was sent by God to die on this earth for me and for you, then I will always have a reason to worship. I will never lose some of you God God has given you seed God has given you promise God has given you a plan for your life and yet we're we're here on Sunday mornings I surrender all I surrender all man what what is that guy wearing over there God almighty can you believe that person? I knew that person would go up front. Man, they need Jesus. They need healing. Can I tell you, it, I'm gonna say something and some of you are gonna go, wow, but if you are coming here on Sunday morning for a religious checklist to just check it off to say, I went to church, I wanna release you to not come to church anymore. Because this is a gathering of worshipers that give praise to God. Listen to what David said in Psalms. He says, because your love is better than life, my lips will always glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, some of you say, man, why do they get so crazy with worship? In your name, I will lift up my hands. I will surrender my life for these few moments each and every week to worship you. And I'm telling you, God is such a good God that when our heart is in a place where it is extremely open and ready to worship God, he begins to fill it up. He begins to grow that seed in your life. He begins to move you along that process. Some of you say, man, Pastor Heath, God gave me a... God gave me a promise years ago, and I haven't seen anything happen. Start worshiping. Start worshiping. Start worshiping God right where you're at, and I promise you, you will begin to see that promise play out. 
I'm not going to come here to check something off. I'm not going to come here because the girl that I'm dating comes here. I'm going to come here to lift my hands and glorify your name and tell you that you're worthy and tell you that I'm thankful and tell you that I'm good. And some of you ought to be clapping right now, but you're not even listening to what I'm saying. God is a good God. <laughs> Woo! I got to be honest with you guys, 1115 is a little bit more happy than you are. Some of y'all need to sleep in and come to 1115 next week because you got up too early and it shows. The last thing we need in our soil, and I believe this with all my heart, is we need a heart that serves others. Some of you are sitting here going, oh Lord, he's going to start pushing for church volunteers. I know where he's going. Some of y'all are always judging me. I can feel it. Like... I know where he's going. We're low on church volunteers. <laughs> Listen to me. You, we, we don't need you to serve, but you need to serve. We don't need you to give, but you need to give. There, there are things in your life that, that when, when God gives you the seed and you're going, okay, God, when's it going to happen for me? When's it gonna happen for me? God, I need it to happen for me. God, I'm, all I'm focused on is me. And God says, no, when you worship, it takes your focus off of you and it puts it on him. And when you serve people, it takes your focus off of you and it puts it on other people. And some of you are trying to grow the promises of God in nasty, rocky, thorny, soil because everything is about you everything is about me can I tell you that, that I, 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 I've never told this story before but I feel like this morning the Lord told me to tell this that for the last 10 years I, I, I had a feeling in my heart like, I, I don't know if I could put my finger on it, but I had a feeling that God had called me to do this. God had called me to follow Pastor Jackie. God had called me to pastor this church. And 10 years ago, I knew I was ready for it right now. And Pastor Jackie didn't know what he was doing, and he should not miss this opportunity <laughs> to put me in this position. And some of you said, amen, he didn't give it to you 10 years ago. Because I needed to go through the process. Can I, can I just tell you right now that if you're sitting there right now and going, man, I'm ready for it, that there needs to be some growth in your life. Because when I got the opportunity to do this, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, I'm not ready for this. I had, I had staff members that I went to lunch with right after we made this announcement, and they said, we don't think you're ready for this. And I was like, man, that makes two of us. <laughs> like, if you don't think I'm ready for this, raise your hand. Like, I got my hand up. And God has reminded me of that story over and over again, and here's what he spoke on my heart. If I would have gave it to you when you thought you were ready for it, it would have crushed you. But now that I've given it to you and you're not ready for it, it can be his church and his congregation and his vision and what he wants to do and where he wants to go. You see, here's the truth. We all want seed and we all want soil and we all want a harvest, right? Everybody, raise your hand if you want a harvest. Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, God bless you, all right? We all want a harvest. We all want the fruit. But here's the truth. Fruit is grown to benefit others, not you. What God does beneath the surface grows fruit that nourishes others, not you. And we've all seen the trees that never got picked. We've all seen the cotton that never got picked. And it just sit there on its own plant and it dies and it withers away.
And boy, I, I don't know about you, but I believe with all my heart. I know with all my heart. I was looking around earlier and I saw Austin. Again, I can barely see because of Austin, can I tell you that some of the seed that God's given you right now, it's not for right now. And you're going, man, what do I do with this? What I, what, what's that, what, what I'm so, now, like now should I do it now? Should I do it now? No, God's saying, I'm, I'm giving you this vision and I'm giving you what you want to do. Austin's an amazing businessman. He's giving you vision for your business and your family of where he wants to take you. But he's saying, it's not, it's just seed right now. And so don't, don't get worried that you're not doing it quick enough. Don't get worried that it's not happening fast enough. Know that right now it's just seed. And keep planting it in good soil. Keep worshiping God with all your heart. Keep leading your family. Keep leading your business. And I promise you that there's going to be a harvest at the end of it. There's going to be, there's going to be something at the end of it if you just stay the course and if you just stay in the process. And I believe that God has some great things for the people sitting in this room today. I believe he's got promises of, of spouses and marriages. I say, man, I, why is it not me? I remember going through a season where I, I said, man, I, every one of my friends is getting married except old Heath. Why not me? And come to find out, my wife at the time was only 17, so he was just waiting till she got legal, all right? <laughs> there, <laughs> there is, like, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> but he's also making me the man that I needed to be to lead this family. And so I want everybody to stand up in this room. I, uh, I, I almost feel like this is more of like a, a life coaching message than it is like a, 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 a Bible message. But I'm telling you, it's just, I've seen it over and over again. This is the way that God works in our lives. You say, man, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm up there in age. I don't know if God's promises are still gonna come true in my life. Can I tell you, as long as you're breathing, Everybody take a deep breath in, deep breath out. God's promises will still come true in your life. And so I want to ask all of our ministering elders to come up. We're going to open up the altar for ministry this morning. I, I, I believe God has some of you in the middle of the process. And as I was praying this morning, he put this word on my heart. Don't give up right now. Don't lose hope right now. Don't, don't stop on the verge of your harvest. And so, Father, right now, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you say, man, Pastor Heath, that's me. I'm in, I'm in the middle of process. I just want you to shoot your hand up. One, two, three. Hands going up all over this room. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, for every hand that's lifted up, Father, give them a renewed hope. Father, I declare in this room that promises you gave 8, 10, 15, 20 years ago, Father, that they will still come to fruition in our lives. Father, if they're in this room today and they've lost hope, Father, remind them of what your word says. That even as we pray, even as you taught us to pray, you taught us, even if I'm in the valley of the shadow, even if it's not going the way that I wanted to, I will still glorify your name. I will still worship you, Father. Father, remind us. That while you, you give us the seed, Father, you give us the promise, the possession is our part. Taking hold of what you said is our part. Father, I thank you for this church. 
I pray for each and every person that came up here and got prayer for their family this morning. Father, I pray restoration in families today. I pray healing in hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. If you need prayer today, come up and see our ministering elders. We'll see you guys next week.